They do their commits and change logs. Andrew's a big, big, uh, really, you know, keen on that, and so am I. But he's really experienced in that, so it'll be good. Uh, so yeah, just got a couple more technical things to sort out, and then we are cooking on gas. Evening all. Sorry, we've started a little bit late on the stream. Um, just waiting on Eddie, who's also streaming on his YouTube channel, and. Uh, yeah, he's just having a few technical issues, just trying to tidy up the last few things. I'm blaming Eddie for this. It's right, we're an hour late. What, in fact, an hour and 15 minutes late getting started. Yeah. So right. apologies to anyone that did wait around and was hoping for the stream to start, and we're on a bit late. But uh, yeah, in a few minutes, we are going to do a bit of a code review, look around at a few GitHub projects. I think we're going to start with Angular Material. Uh, so for any oh. Angular people out there, or for just anyone that wants to see a bit around what Google are doing with some of their open source projects. Uh, stay tuned, we will be having a look in a few minutes as soon as Eddie is all set, which he won't be long. So I'm just <laughs> going to pop myself on mute for two minutes and we will be back in a second. Video. I'm not muted by the way. I left You're not muted? Oh, okay, no, I'll leave it open. Leave it open. Leave it open. Leave it open. Um, you can hear us swearing at the laptop whilst, uh, whilst it doesn't behave. Yes. And if you can hear a fan running in the background, <laughs> that as well is Eddie's computer spinning up going yeah i don't like this because he needs to buy a new laptop i do he's gonna be down the apple shop tomorrow i think so he's gonna get the most expensive laptop in the shop and then he's still gonna have problems but i am wearing a github t-shirt look at oh this. yeah we've got the we've got the open, google open source out as well so, so yeah. respect angular material material design oh i can't spell code he's just tweeting up to make sure everyone knows that he's online and uh He's in kind of strobe light effect on his feed. Right, let's go. Okay, tweeted that. Cooking on gas now. Um, the sound is from my laptop, but uh, hopefully the audio and visual is good. And uh, again, thank you for the person who gave me a thumbs up. I'll give myself a thumbs up. Um, Hacking your stats. You know, <laughs> gotta be good. So let's get started, right. Shall we, uh, shall we jump straight in and bring up some projects? Yeah, yeah, so we're going Angular Material, yeah? Let's do it. Let's, uh, let's go um, jump onto Angular bring Material. bring that up, and uh, hopefully all is good. It says that my, live my, my stream is healthy, so that's good. That's what the doctor also said, so that's also <laughs> good. <laughs> oh, we haven't had to go down the doctors too recently. Ah, oh, my, uh, my stream is a little bit funky. I'm not <laughs> a little bit funky? Okay, yeah, you said I was. That, uh, I obviously haven't set the screen ratio right, so I'm going to jump to OBS, which is running over the background. While Andrew's doing and that, I'm going to fix that live. I'm going to jump to material design and we're going to start talking about that. So, uh, and everyone gets to see my desktop for two minutes, which design. is cool. Just switch to your camera though. Yeah, that's all right. There we go. Well, I need the, uh, the right screen scene open. Uh, okay. So we're all good. Okay, so let me see. So as you can see, we're using OBS for streaming. Um, had some issues the other day, YouTube was mucking around. Plus, obviously, we want to screen share what's on the desktop. So now you should be able to see the Angular Material project up on GitHub. Yeah, hopefully. I've switched to it too. I've got my Stream Deck here and I've switched to it. I realized that I labeled them wrong. That's not me, that's both of us, and that switches <laughs> both as me. So, you know, it's not even oh, like. Um, yeah, it's not good. Amateurs, uh, amateurs, I tell I you. I should really put both of us on that one, not us. Okay, next time. I hope you like the butterflies behind. We are in the 8 bit butterfly room. Uh, that's not going to be our team name, apparently, but I thought it was a good contender. Yes, and I've just realized if I switch to my tab, everyone can see it. So I switch back to kind of both of us then go back to, if I want to go check out Twitter or, or, or um, see what's going on. Hey all, so I was going to like something in the chat as well. Hey all, sorry for the technical issues. Share your open source projects with us to review the open sourceness. I still like that word, I know people don't like it, but I like it, open sourceness. Cool, so we head back to screens. Now we're looking at, that's the wrong screen, and look at material design. <laughs> right, it was just my, I had the open source project, so it's okay. Actually, Let me zoom the wrong a little one. bit, because I'm a little bit zoomed out on here. AngularJS, sure. that's the wrong you're one. On, you're on the, like, the old school. Material 2, I'm guessing. Material 2 we want, yeah. So we're looking at new Angular, we're not looking, I mean, Angular Material, the first one, that's, God, it's been probably four years since I used that now. It's so, been a while. Still a good project. But uh, we want something a little bit more modern. We're just going to take a look and see what it is that Google are doing and some of the good practices, right? Because yeah. I think Google are pretty hot on when it comes to the open source and, and how they do things on GitHub. I'm going to switch back to me for a second because 
I want to change those screens because I want it to be on both of us. I mean, it looks really weird. Um, oh, if I click on that to do it, it does change the scene. You have to be so on there. You don't have to. You can go to studio mode uh, and then you can yeah, change yeah. stuff and it hasn't gone over yet. Oh, so he says. Well played. Yes. yes. So well played. Let me switch that over. So I want to. I don't even want to start briefly talking about using the screen too much to give a bit of background and then using the screen too much out. without using like the repo. Like talk a bit about what maybe Material yeah. and Angular are or something. Yeah. So uh, I don't know how many developers we've got on the stream, but hopefully that is the main audience we're looking towards. If not, you will be a developer soon. We're going to absolutely. To we've got some tutorials coming out. So if you're a budding developer as well, want to get into it, and you're sort of thinking, what do these crazy people get up to in their evenings, and how do their day jobs go? Um, yeah, you'll hear a little bit about that, I'm sure, as well. Anyway, uh, so Angular, it's a uh, open source front end framework. Um, unlike React, it's just a library, but that's another subject <laughs> altogether. Um, yeah, we don't have a huge amount of love for React in the room, but uh, that's, uh, that's another conversation. We are going to have a session, in fact, with some React devs in a couple of weeks, I believe. So stay tuned for that one. That could be uh, quite a heated conversation. Yeah. I'm going to try this out and see if this works now. Let's have a look. If I switch to my screen, it should be us in the corner. And then it should be my screen in the background. I love these technical issues when it comes through. Yeah, perfect. OK, so that's got us. I think it's much, much better. Cool. Right, yeah, so, uh, so Angular, nice little framework. Um, comes with pretty much everything you need out the box. You don't have to go hunting around and trying to figure out what libraries you need. However, there are a few things where you have to obviously decide. So that's where things like Angular Material come in giving you a design framework to go with your project. So you, you've got both the, the Angular side of things with the components, the directives, the, uh, the pipes, and all, all the other elements for building up a, uh, a framework of your own, uh, an Angular material, which is a front-end framework using Google's material design um, specification. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily use Angular material too much on projects. Now, when I was first starting with Angular, I did use it fairly extensively. Uh, I probably more recently just use the CDK that they have and build my own design framework on top of that. Uh, but nevertheless, we're looking more from the open source perspective and what Angular Material has to bring and how they set up their project. We're going to have a little bit of a look at some of the files they have there, why those exist, uh, look at a few of the pull requests that have gone through, comment on sort of good and bad things that go on in their pull requests. Uh, and obviously, whilst we're doing that, if anyone has a project of their own they would like us to look at, then please let us know and we will also take a look Spectra at some of your does. Own projects. Spectra, send us a link to your open source project. Am I looking at the right camera? I'm not really sure. Yeah, no, I a, keep looking at it. <laughs> there's too many cameras. cameras. Uh, send us your uh, link to your open source projects and let us let us get up on the screen. We can give you a shout out. We can only give you a shout out. We can also uh, review it, give you some tips back uh, and get some friends if they've got uh, some projects that they want reviewed, like open source projects. Send us, get them to send us some links. Yes, you finally got us live. It's good to see you. those bloody time zones. So uh, you don't have any projects. I don't believe you. You've got some open source projects. Come on, don't be shy. And if not, you can start one now. We'll take a look in a few minutes. Yes, start an open source project now. Good idea, good call, Andrew. Start one now and we will... Um, Never too late. We can contribute to it. Create one and I'll create a, send you a pull request. How about that? It's not really the objective today, but yeah, maybe. You can review my pull request. What's happened here? Oh no, yours has gone a bit dodge. Oh, okay, maybe we can hit. It Might be that side. Okay. However, okay. I built. Uh, wait a second. Uh, I don't have any open source projects. I will, however, build the one I'm starting open source. So start it right now. We're going to be streaming for about an hour or so. So you got a bit of time. Yeah. Yeah. Be on for the next hour, I guess. We we started late. We were going to start <laughs> so late. We were going to start an hour and a half ago. So yeah, we'll still try and do an hour. We were going to do two hours, but cool. Okay. Yes. Angular Material, Let's where should go. we begin? Okay. You, uh, you've you not got the project up yet. I've got the project up. Uh, that's the right one. There. There. And then if I hit this button, boom! Magic it happens. comes up. So how's okay. the sound, Spectra? How's the how's the audio? I'm not using any big mics today. I'm using just my laptop mic in front of me, which is not going to be great. But yes, I bought lots of cool equipment with me, 12 kilos backpack, and I left one vital cable to connect it to my laptop at home. So that really, really upset me. <laughs> So much. Well, I won't do it again. Cool. I, I hope the sound on mine is coming through. Right. I'm just going to turn the volume up just a fraction just to hear. Oh, you're getting some feedback though. The headphones in. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, uh, should we start by looking at some of these files? So, they, so do. Google put a few files up. They've got quite a few. Some of these are GitHub specific ones, and others they just add themselves. Oh, so, there's, 
just thought of a GitHub contribution. I'm so sorry to interrupt. You see, you're right. Code reviews, coding standards. Oh no, these aren't GitHub files, are they? I was going to say we could create yeah, a GitHub yeah, yeah. folder, and yeah, they've already we got don't one. Have a GitHub folder. Oh, I thought of a really good contribution there. Sorry, ignore me. I got excited for nothing. Yeah. So, uh, so some of the files that I'm focusing on here, these uh, these ones that are in capital. So, the change log, their code reviews, their coding standards, contributing. So, contributing that that's a pretty key one for any open source project, right? If we had to have a quick look in that. In which one? The con contributing markdown file. That should be in dot, dot .github. Why is it not in dot .github? It should be, but a lot of people put that in the top, in the top oh, level. Oh yeah, they do actually. No, you're right. The contributing one is yeah. in the top level. So. Yeah. so obviously this is just telling people, if you want to contribute to Angular Material, what do you need to do? They have a code of conduct, which actually takes them to their own website. Um, they are, say if you've got problems, what do you need to do? How to submit issues? If you're looking for a feature, how do you go about requesting that? So it just gives you just generally the good conduct, how if you want to contribute to the project, should you be doing things? So again, submitting pull requests, how should you be naming your branches? How do you do commits? I mean, in some respects, it's a good lesson to learn. If you look around at some of these projects and see what are some of the good practices they're looking for, then, um, then yeah, it's an opportunity that uh, you can decide, well, these guys, they use fast forward, for example, on their pull requests. Um, oh, interesting. We definitely got to talk about the commit messages. This is, this is like this commit is, messages is, is a big one. Yeah, this so is good. really nice. Um, the main thing with commit messages, I suppose, is a lot of people use conventional changelog these days. Yeah, um, so really cool. Conventional changelog has a fairly specific format, and if you're using it, you can then use the conventional changelog generator CLI. I was going to say, but yeah, generator, and it will cooler. it will create for you. A change log that says these are all the things that have gone up, but it also groups them together into different areas. So, what's features, what's bug fixes, uh, what's just a chore, so maybe an admin task, like updating does, dependencies or something. Yeah, maybe even a little bit of refactoring might come under a chore too. But uh, that's not a chore, that's a real benefit. It's a feature. It is a benefit. I, I, I would tend to put them under features, but sometimes people put them under chores, right? But yeah, you can see down here, so they, they are mentioning what are the different types they use. So, features, it's a new feature, uh, a fix, a bug fix documentation change. Uh, they actually have one for refactor on here as a specific task, uh, adding tests, sorting out the builds and so forth. So that's a really good format. And the format typically, if I just scroll back up a tiny bit, and he might want to be following us so people can see on his screen. Uh, um, um, I'm kind of following. I was, got, I was looking at my chat. Sorry, where have we got to? Um, so what they ask you to do is basically fill it out in this format of what's the type, so the type below, feature, fix, docs, and then in brackets, how do you want to scope that? So if you've got in Angular Materials perspective, different components, you might be saying, this is a feature for the input component. So the scope would probably be input in this case. And then a subject like, what have you done? Maybe you've increased the border by one pixel. So you've changed all borders to be two pixels. Your subject would be something on those lines. And then you can add more detail below. So they say, put a blank line in, put any body text in, another blank line and any footer. Which, and maybe the footer could be something like contributed by Eddie or Andrew. Um, just to give them a little bit of a reference back to yourself and some of those things. So yeah, oh yeah, okay. And, then, and yes. actually, there there are suggesting in the footer to put breaking change information in their case. Nice. So d different people ask for different things. Uh, they also um, Google are very big on their CLA, so they do expect people to sign up to a contributor license agreement. I wouldn't recommend that for most projects. I mean, in general, if people are contributing, they're yeah. giving you access to use and and reuse their stuff so yeah i mean most things if you contribute you could say it's a shared ip you contribute to that project they can use it for whatever they want plus if you want to use it on your own project you're allowed to use it on yours but google are quite big on just making sure that's all crystal clear to people well, they don't have actually have a concrete example of what it's like so where you've got type scope subject that's the most important part yeah it's really you can uh, do so type is something like feature fix docs style re oh, there is a refactor perf um, test and build and chore, which you did mention, and then scope is um, the actual component or branch. You define that yourself. It could I be think. different. I mean, again, it could be within the docs. So if it's a docs type, it could be docs to do with um, a getting started, so installation or something. Yeah, and then it's just then a, a message afterwards. Yeah. So I had a question. People say introduce my friend. So. I will share. Andrew's just started recently a YouTube channel, so um, I'm quite keen to get uh, him to in, in more into YouTube. So I want to share his link to his channel. Please do subscribe, 
and I'm kicking the chair that's got the camera on it, so it's shaking it, so I'm really sorry. Uh, so we've both been developing for like 15 years, right? We met... So got 30 years between us, that's how old we are. We met 10, 10 years ago? 10 years ago now. Yeah. Um, Let me get share a link to you. And yes, yeah, ever since the last 10 years, we've been working off and on projects together. We've been working on projects outside of work together. There's been loads of stuff we've done. Um, Eddie, probably stronger on the PHP background and me more from a Java background. But both of us for the last, oh gosh, what, four years now probably? We've been quite big on the full stack JavaScript set up yeah. so um, node back end angular typically on the front end um, back end databases are generally no sequel um, document store databases so i've got probably a bit of a preference towards mongo eddie perhaps more to elastic um, but yeah our background is quite extensive and everywhere we go we're very quality focused so that's one of our big things um, so whilst, yeah, everyone's probably more familiar with Eddie because he's big on his social, he has been pushing me heavily at the social world uh, and I am slowly getting in there. But 23 yeah, subscribers already. I haven't even shared the 23, link yet. Yeah, yeah no, that's good. And we'll, we'll build it up a bit more, hopefully. So that's um, good. So thank you, everyone. Yeah, once they hit 1,000, there'll be some big celebration, I'm sure. I know you're looking to 10,000 right now. Yeah, I'm really keen to get 10,000. Yeah. This but is there's Andrew's. A, there's a quick intro. This is Andrew's YouTube. Yeah, so please do subscribe. Um, He's focusing on uh, I Angular. I am doing some tutorials and, like, for best Angular. Best practices, yeah, yeah. GitHub, uh, doing your, signing your GitHub commits. So That'll be coming out this weekend, yeah. You get that kind of sign, and in each commit you get that sign bad that you've actually signed it, and you're doing stuff like that. So he's doing, I'm doing more events, hackathons, and I'm kicking that chair again, a bit stupid. Um, yeah, so I'm focusing more on that side, and Andrew's focusing more on the coding side. So we're actually thinking of joining our, our channels together to um, we'll keep our channels separate, sorry, but doing a joint channel where we can maybe stream these sorts of things on and uh, and do that. So we really just know what people's feedback are. And uh, if anyone's just joined, don't forget to share your links to your open source projects in the chat and also give us a thumbs up. And uh, we look forward to reviewing your, um, yeah, your, your open source projects. Do you want to take us through another file on the project? I've talked a bit about the contributors uh, file and how very important to have one of those. What else have they got? Uh, let's have a look. I'm kind of like breaking everything now, so let's see, let me bring it come back. Um, so if we switch back to sharing my screen. What about things like a license and picking a license? Yeah, actually someone was asking about that today. That lady who came on the Instagram um, uh, stream we did yesterday, Monday lunchtime, she, she was talking about licensing. And licensing is a really, really important, but tough, uh, tough one. So I'm kind of easy. I like to have the most uh, permissive, I think that's the right word, license. Therefore, everybody can just kind of you know, use it and contribute, etc. Um, but, ah, uh, oh, yes, uh, Jelani. Yes, that was you. Thank you very much for joining our stream this evening. And thank you very much for the question on licensing. I think it's just so important. And still, after so many, and over 10 years of doing open source, the licensing still like, like confusing. Let me, let me do that again with uh, my kind of bigger. <laughs> Um, I don't know if that's gone through. Yeah, but, well done. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so licensing is really hard. Um, GitHub really have uh, a really good site, which is, I forget the name, uh, open source license I'm or something. I'll pop the camera on you for a bit while you talk about licensing. I really need to get a lawyer to talk about this, but there is, oh, I can't think of what it's called now. Oh, choosealicense.com. So choosealicense.com, this, this site is done by GitHub, and... Uh, I don't know if Andy you want to bring it up for your stream as well. They help you choose a license. So if I need, I need to work in a community, you can look at those licenses. Or uh, I want something simple and permissive, like MIT. I, I use MIT a lot. Or I care about sharing improvements. I, I kind of jump between MIT and, and uh, GPL. So yeah, those are important. I just want everyone to be able to con contribute with confidence and then everyone to share any improvements they make. And then that way, the, the project keeps improving and people can take it away and use it themselves, but they can't, I don't know, keep it closed. They can't take it away and make it closed. So I'm really keen about the open source community, keeping it always open and always improving. That's really important. And I think most projects go for MIT these days. I mean, some over time, like I think uh, Mongo did it, they, they were MIT. I'm not quite sure, I can't remember which one they've gone to. I think it's with the GPL license they went towards because they found that uh, places like Amazon were trying to copy their CLI 
And in fact, Amazon did yes, launch did. a uh, comparative product to Mongo. You can use the Mongo client, but because they changed their licensing, I think just after 3.6, um, yeah, Amazon can no longer effectively try to duplicate the Mongo client to work within their ecosystem, which isn't ideal because it would be quite nice to have options out there where you're still using that connection. It's because theirs wasn't open source. If they made yeah. theirs open source, it would have been fine. But it's because they were taking in something that's open source and making improving it but making it closed source, which I kind of I kind of do agree with. So if I switch back, just to give some examples, what you're saying about Mongo, I think it's a really good example. Uh, the the simple and permissive one, the MIT one, Babel, .NET, and Rails use that. Is the example as you can see on the on the site. And uh, for the one about uh, I care about sharing improvements, uh, the GNU GPL, I think it's on version you know, version three now, Ansible, Bash, and GIMP. So uh, yeah, it's tough. I think as long as you choose one of those two, you, you'll be okay. Um, it, you'll be fine. And there are so many open source projects that don't have an open source license as well, which is really confusing, right? People don't know what what they can do. And a lot of people think by not putting a license, it means that no one can use it either. And some people think the opposite. Some people also think because they haven't put a license, they, they, you can do whatever you want. It. It's like, well, which one is it? It makes it really confusing. So I do advise putting a license. When you create an open source repo, it does say, create with a readme, I always say hit yes, and then create with a license and just pick one there. You can always change it later, just like Andrew was saying with, uh, with Mongo. You've got another question over there. I do. Uh, oh yeah, brilliant. So, um, so again, just to say thank you, Jelani. Thank you very much for the uh, the question on Instagram. I, I told you lots of other people would be keen in knowing like what our thoughts are on that because licensing is a really hard one. All the conferences that I go to, they always people always ask questions and aren't a lot of answers around that. I think if you're going to go open source, you might as well go open. full hog. There's, yeah. There's no point going. I'm open, but actually, there's things that I'm concerned about. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. So let's answer some of the other questions we've got. Um, Spectra says, uh, since I'm a super new nub, I'm getting new. Um, open source equals open Git, so others can contribute. Yes. So again, another great question. It's brilliant that you're asking these questions publicly, publicly, because I'm sure there are other people who have um, the same question, or maybe too nervous to answer. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, so open source means on GitHub or anywhere else, but GitHub's the main platform, your project is completely open. So if you go to this one, for example, um, Dashboard Hub Pipeline Dashboard, Dashboard, one of my projects, is a project for my startup, is 100% open source. We even have a repo where we have like a documentation repo, we even put our notes from our retrospectives, our planning meetings, um, from events and stuff like that, all, all completely open. So. Yeah, everything's open. Anyone, any one of you watching could create an issue, could make some changes to code, make a, an improvement back or ask a question. So I'm really keen on having that transparency. Uh, got Connor, Connor, thanks for joining. Good to see you again. I want to give a good shout out to Connor to coming back again. You know, yeah, yeah, he's been following a couple of these awesome. streams. I think you were with us on Monday when we had Anton in the room as well, right? Oh yes, it's true. You had Anton in the room, and I didn't bring the big camera, so we we're using the phone and trying to use this big screen, and it was a it was a disaster as well. But it was good fun. It was good fun. Uh, so thanks for um, you know bearing with us some technical issues today. I did bring the big camera, but I left the cable at home. So yeah, I'm still on my phone again today. But at least we're doing it through the laptop, so I can share screens and make it a bit easier. Uh, and uh, uh, Jelani, no problem at all. Any more questions? Do just shout in the chat, and we'll, we'll gladly try and answer. And if we can't, we usually know somebody who who can. We've got uh, Circle Pixel. What can be done with AWS? So what do you mean what can be done? So if I um, jump back to us again, just on the, on the big screen. So when you say what can be done on uh, AWS, so generally I don't want to kind of say something that's obvious, but just for anyone else who doesn't know, AWS is a hosting platform, uh, one, of the, one of the biggest ones, a bit like yeah. Google Cloud or DigitalOcean. Um, yeah, they're, uh, they're mostly PaaS um, platform as a service. They do yeah. have some IaaS opportunities like EC2, but they're mostly a platform as a service. So you're paying for a pre-set up environment that has everything you need. So uh, take the Elastic Beanstalk side of it where you just say, here's my project, deploy it out. And very similar to if anyone's familiar with Heroku, it will just know everything. It doesn't, you don't need to go on there and say, right, I need to install Node. I need to install um, various intrusion detection software. It comes with pretty much everything you need. 
Um, and it does all the auto scaling as well. So you don't have to go sitting up load balance and say, right, I've got this environment, I want to load balance it. it. It does all of your kind of online production environment capabilities. And it, you can run SSL certificates on there. They have SSL certificate management. Uh, so everything you need is in, out of the box. And that's what AWS is all about. It's, it's hosting, but there's more to it. They've got machine learning, artificial intelligence, and they've they've got got storage. Huge, they've got everything. Yeah. And Microsoft, with their Azure, are challenging it. Same with Google's. So it's really great that there's a bit of competition around that. They're like serverless platforms across all three are really cost effective. You don't have to pay, oh, I want this server with four gigs of RAM paying a hundred pounds a month. You can go serverless, it just runs your function and you get the first million free, which is actually quite a lot. And then after that, the next million is like 20 cents. So it serverless is really the way to go. So yeah, it's really, really interesting. So hopefully that answers your question. When it comes to Lambda, I mean, I'd say, AWS are ahead on Lambda, for example, and the functions. When it comes to just hosting a static website, I actually quite like Firebase's model for that. Firebase yeah. hosting is really good. Um, when it comes to storage of the files, again, probably AWS is, is ahead with that, but Firebase isn't too bad. Um, I suppose Azure is the one that for me is always lagging behind a bit. I've, I've used it a couple of times. Their documentation needs improvements. Not that I'm here to slate Azure, there's a lot of big companies that go using Azure, mostly because it's got Microsoft backing. They're very big on their security, don't get me wrong. I think the security of Azure is, is very good, but trying to figure your way around it, it's just not very clear. So AWS has a user experience issue as well. It um, does, the user I experience mean, isn't great. Uh, it's, Firebase is actually pretty good. This is why I'm moving my, my, yeah. my open source startup to Firebase, because um, it's just, it's a bit like Heroku, it just works. It's actually really nice. I'm actually really enjoying it. Um, so, yeah. Reed, thank you very much for joining. And thank you very much for, I think, another really great question. I'm loving these questions tonight. This is actually great. Yeah, we have, the um, question is, uh, can you talk more, talk more about the Red Hat model of open source paid features support? I'm currently in a boot camp, um, and I went in with a personal itch, business idea, awesome. And as a new developer of a public and private data, so basically by starting to follow me, I've thrown a wrench into the plans. Oh no, but good. If it's an open source wrench, it's good. Trust me, you'll thank me later. And even Andrew, who had his, uh, his startup, Vendra, as an e-commerce platform, was closed source and you recently started open sourcing more and more and more so yeah well for me i had slightly different reasons the re main reason for me to not go straight into open source was it wasn't a full-time job for me uh, my concerns were i might start getting lots of questions the traction might pick up too fast but i suppose i've come to realize that they could be good problems good. to have yeah um but yeah i suppose my reasons weren't necessarily the most founded reasons and at the end of the day i will probably have almost everything opened up. There will be a couple of things like how I do my deployments that I might keep um, to myself. Uh, but again, a lot of that will be set up and, and available through the open source project. So yeah, if you're uh, interested in e-commerce and you're looking for a platform to use, um, I feel like I'm giving an A-team speech right now. But, uh, but yeah, have a look at, at Ventura in, uh, in the, over the next couple of months and we'll be open sourcing the majority of the e-commerce platform. Push him to open source more and more and more. I want it all open source. So now to address the question that Reid asked, so we haven't yeah. forgotten. So uh, just to repeat, uh, the open source model of Red Hat. So Red Hat and Ubuntu, which is part of Canonical, do very similar. And same with actually, um, what's that uh, other open source e-commerce platform? Um, Magento? No, the other one. Open source one? Yeah. The guy I interviewed at the web engineering event. Oh, I can't think what it's called now. Oh. Can people name some open Stop. source platforms on the chat? We talked about it today. Yeah, it was shop something, wasn't it? Shopware. Shopware. Yes, well done. So, and Shopware again. It's a lot, so a lot of these open source companies are mostly open source. I mean, if you look at if you look at places like Facebook, Twitter, uh, Travis, they are maybe you know 50%, 60% open source and they have their crown jewels as, as still private. But places like Red Hat and Canonical, open source everything. And even Elasticsearch actually is 100% open source with their main platform. And they, they make money through support or, or hosting, because WordPress is 100% open source. But if you don't want to host your own WordPress and update it every month as a new release for security updates. 
you just pay them whatever it is, five pounds a month, and like WordPress will host it for but you. But in other places also, they do, they have two editions. They have like a community edition, and they have sort of, I'll take the word enterprise edition as well. But that's how a lot of these places gear themselves up, right? They say the community edition, we're not offering much support here. Ask the community, go to forums for this stuff. And that's when you look at Red Hat, that's effectively what CentOS is, right? For Red Hat. It's their community version of Red Hat. Yeah. Uh, whereas Red Hat itself, the enterprise one, they're expecting you to come up to them and say, right, I want a support agreement in place. And although the code might be open source, again, I think Red Hat is not 100% open source. CentOS on the other half side is. Um, and it uses most of the Red Hat code base. But Red Hat expect you to approach them with a support model in mind and say, right, we're going to need X amount of time from you to help us. We want turnaround SLAs of two hours if there's a problem, et cetera, et cetera. Plus the enterprise version or Red Hat itself comes with additional features or additional bits of software already installed onto it. Um, so there are some differences when it comes to the community editions and the enterprise editions that these big companies do still keep back, even though Red Hat is big on their open source. Um, they don't give you everything. Yeah, so everyone does it differently. So it's still possible to make money being open source. So for example, going back to Dashboard Hub, to so my startup, I, um, uh, yeah, so my startup, what I do is I make everything open source, like I said, even the meetings and so forth, and I'll have, uh, the people can host it themselves if they want, but they have to get do the updates, keep an eye on when a new version comes out. But they just want um, uh, the pain-free version, they just pay me or my company, uh, to host it for them and we we host it on a what do you call it on a, on a shared platform like we just host we do have the the, the the dashboard hub platform as a service effectively um, is what it what it is yeah yeah you're yeah it's multi-tenant right multi-tenant that's the word thing for thank you very much we actually have a github project from i can't pronounce that i r z i r n z Thank you very much. And do, we want to, do we want to finish a little bit more with Angular Material before we jump on something else? Because we've only looked at a couple of things. Oh in yes, there. that's true. Yes, that's as we were talking point. about some of the good sides of it. I got carried we away. We do want to. We do want to look at some other projects. Yes. We jump straight awesome. into some of the. Okay, give us a give us a few minutes. We'll we'll review that project after we finished with. Um, yeah, let's just highlight a few, just to highlight a couple of things. We don't have to go deep dive into some of it. Sure. No problem. No problem. Read. I uh, hope that helps. Any more questions? Just keep asking tonight, or we'll try and do. We're trying to do a stream once or twice a week. So. Um, just come with your questions and bring your friends and bring your open source projects and we'll definitely take a look. So let's go back to this. So earlier we, we were looking at these and we were saying that some of these sort of capitalized files are quite important, right? So there's things like the readme file. I mean, a lot of projects you go to are missing readme files, believe it or not. Yeah, it's just the, the simplest thing, thing right? It's, it's the first thing you look at when you go to a project. You go, so how do I use this? What what do I get from it? So it obviously a readme the as well. tells you a bit, how do you get started? Where do you go to learn more? What is it they've got available? In this case, it's quite a large list of features. What's coming soon, perhaps, as far as we're, we're working on this stuff. Um, yeah, it just gives you a nice intro. One of the things they're perhaps missing might be a couple of screenshots. I think a lot of projects benefit from having a bit of a screenshot just yeah. to show you what you're going to get. I know Angular Material does have an extensive website. And again, going back to things that are good, if you drop to the top of the page, they give you a link through to their project. Again. People miss Simple that. little things, but everyone misses it's adding true. a link to where you can find the docs and see more. For your open source projects, you really want to lower the, we'll do two things. One, lower the barrier to entry. So therefore, someone who's maybe new or not so confident in open source can, can get involved in your project because you want to build up the community, you want more eyes on your project, etc. And uh, don't forget social coding. And two, you want to be inclusive. So if someone's not necessarily a coder, might be a designer, but they want to use your project and get involved. You want to be inclusive for all different technologies and so and different backgrounds and skills. So yes, um, great tips by Andrew. Um, I think that's really important. Uh, the GitHub folder itself, we did mention that. I don't know if you want to take us through a couple of the files that they've got in their, uh, their GitHub folder, just very quickly. Yeah, so I don't recognize, I know issue templates. So code owners so maybe, yeah. I'm what's code owners, I have a look. Code, oh, you must know code owners. Because code owners, basically, you're allowed to specify a folder structure. So you can say, this folder structure from the project is owned by certain individuals. So you say, okay. this folder, this person, you put the at symbol there as if you were referencing them. You can put multiple people there. And then when you go and raise a pull request, if you've got it set to requires 
an approver on there. Okay. You can then say it also requires a code owner to be one of the approvers. Right. So anything within that folder structure has to have that particular individual come along and say, yes, I'm happy with this. So rather than protecting a branch, but with one person, you can you do You can it. protect effectively a folder to say, this That's is the cool. expert on that part of the code base, which is great for a large project where you've got lots of people contributing. You're bound to have certain people that know it really well, and yeah. other people that are less confident. So the code owners is quite a nice file for a larger project to have. Yeah, that is, uh, that is very, very cool. And Eddie's learned something new today. It is. That's why I love these things, like, right? You know, always about learning lots of new things and so on. So it's good. It's cool. Issue um, template file then. Yeah. Do you know that? Yes. So this I can do. So issue template is when you create an issue. So if we actually, it will populate it with this file. So if I go to raw, you can kind of see what the markdown will look like and what, what, look like, what it will look like. I can't even talk. It's been a long day. It's like 4 a.m. this morning. So if I create a new issue, you'll see some some magic. I won't actually create it, but I'll, I'll start creating it. Uh, oh, interesting. They, I was going to say, I, I've noticed they've got the new issue template folder as well. So, that, that, so that one you were showing, actually, is the old one. That, there is now this new feature in GitHub. Again, it is a little bit behind the, on oh, the wheel here. Shit. If you have an issue template folder within your GitHub, then actually you can have different features. So in this case, they have a bug and a feature template file inside but there. does that mean the other one the issue template is redundant now which it has become they, they probably should have removed that and so should we create a pull request and do it they might yeah me. yeah go for it i mean at the end of the day it is redundant now it is redundant right because um, if i click new it gives me these two give you the two options and, feature which is so good i wonder yeah, so if my, I, my open source project if i just do that on my side here i can go to a new issue and you will see what are you to. doing? Are you reporting a bug or are you reporting this? There is an actual regular issue one. So hang, Ooh, before we say that, okay, the point. regular issue. Okay, look. now that is falling back to their issue template. Right, okay. So, so that's, that, so that's that. where that does come into play still. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to nick their templates and use it on mine. That's what open source is about, right? Nicking stuff. I mean, borrowing. Um, yeah, not nicking. It's looking towards the best practices and that's what I say. adapting yourself towards the best practices. And best practice can be anything. It's all moving forward, right? But it's it's what's an improvement. And this is where things like retrospectives and the agile world come in quite handy. Okay, I'll do that later on because we know we want to review other people's projects. So I'll do it later yeah. on. But that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to add that to mine. Um, that's actually really, really cool. I do. I'm going to raise an issue. Does someone want to get a GitHub contribution for today? Can they raise an issue for me on my project? Any volunteers? Just write in the chat saying me, and I'll let you know what we should raise. And you can raise it. And you can get some, you know, open sourceness contribution for today. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, to to share the love. So let me know. I'll give you that second. I think a bit of a delay between us and us talking and, and you receiving it, yeah, and then the no, chat cool. coming through. So um, let us know. If no one wants to do it, that's fine. But you know, type a few words, create an issue on my open source project. So it's not on materials, it's on mine. So, um, so yeah. I won't talk too much about the other files because I think, I mean, obviously there's things like Circle they're using for their uh, CI uh, and so forth and so forth. Let's have a quick look along some of the other tabs. They have issues that are opened up. Uh, obviously the main thing with issues is probably the labels that go on. They have a lot of labels on the material project. Okay. Wouldn't necessarily suggest to look too much at theirs because they have a lot. But uh, if you look, I don't know what Dashboard Hub's using for labels, but I have two sure, pages, um, this uh, material. Yeah, it's a bit too many. I mean, I know they're trying to classify things, but labels are very useful to help organize your project and, and, and filter, filter things and out. Stuff, yeah. um, they do have milestones, so you can see what they've got in their upcoming releases on GitHub. Pull requests, so this is where things get a bit more interesting. You can see that they're quite busy on their pull requests. Various comments, a lot of stuff in the backlog. 287 open pull requests. Yeah, they, they should really be getting rid of some because 287 seems like a lot for everyone. Whole pages, that's crazy. Um, and if they want to accept it, well, actually some of them have the orange dot, right? Some of them six days ago, yeah, only so nine the CI, out of 12 checks. CI was going through and the, yeah, something's not right in there. Obviously you something. can click into the, that issue we can have a look and see what was it that hasn't come back so there's a merge status pending um if there's no takers for one. raising this issue by the way i'm going to raise it on mine real quick so don't forget i'm going to get the open source contribution for today let me do that on the big screen so the last thing that i will also i'm going to get the open source contribution for today <laughs> there's an echo in the room <laughs> If, you, if you're not quick, I'll be on there in a second. Um, but the other thing, I suppose, is Angular Material. You also have this projects tab on GitHub. And Angular Material take quite an interesting take on this. They look at that as being the different feature sets. So they look at things like 
tooltips, tables, sorting. And you can see a lot of these bars are, are green all the way across, but if I pick one that's not, so this virtual scrolling one here, for example, you'll see what they've gone, done is they've said, these are things we want to add to it, the things we want to do, what's currently being worked on, then you can also see what's been done. So anything that's been done marks it as green, anything that's in progress gets this little purple bit in the middle, and anything to do is the, is the gray bit on the end. So you can see progress as you're trying to track stuff. And this is where it gets interesting, some of our day jobs where we have people say, oh, okay, how complete is this feature? Um, well, obviously it's as complete as what you have at that, you know about it at that point in time and, the, and it will always be a moving field. Uh, but one thing we're quite keen on is um, issue fidelity. So it's a good way of saying, well, actually the low fidelity stuff is that are these things, medium fidelity are this stuff and the high fidelity are these things. So it's a nice way of just planning everything out. So you might only be worried for an MVP perspective to get the low fidelity stuff done. So running your projects like that is quite a nice way of thinking, okay, these are the features, the components we're building for our project. I will bundle those up into their own projects. Uh, some people just use the projects on here as a simple Kanban board to say, right, what we're working on this sprint, and they'll use it as a bit of a sprint board. Uh, but from an Agile perspective, there's a few interesting takes on that. And I quite like how Angular Material are driving it down the component view of, uh, of how complete is a particular feature. Let me catch up, wait a second. So um, going to project boards, yes, you get to see the progress of the project. And if you, I go into it, as Andrew was saying, you get not started in progress, waiting merge and done. It's a bit like a kind of a Trello uh, board. Awesome. Cool. So whilst we could talk more and more about that project, let's go and jump to this project that yeah. someone... Uh, let's have a look at Lorenzo. Shared. Lorenzo, share. are you still there, Lorenzo? Let's have a look at the, the project that uh, you shared. What was the name of it? Uh, the project oh, name grab the same is... One. Um, do you want me to send you a link? What's the, uh, what's the, the top bit? L, okay. L I, is it? Uh, L I 2 N Z. And then it's the React D3 oh, G drop. Is it L L? React. Yeah. Is it L L? I don't know. What's it look like? It could see. be a one. Um, cool. Lorenzo's still there. Awesome. Bear with us while we're trying to use two computers and failing miserably. I'll go with the I. So, is it React? Uh, he's LL is what? It is LL, is it? Okay, yeah. cool. D3, so LL. Lowercase L. Yeah. See, that's not very user-friendly. I think you should uh, rename the username. Well, it could just be the font, you know. Maybe, maybe uh, yeah, I could have font. chosen a better font to show that. Yeah. Cool, I've got it up on my screen now, okay, so, uh, awesome. so we're in. Let me switch to the screen, and we're having a look. You've got three stars. It's a good start. Awesome. We could add a star. We could add some stars. There you go. Yeah, it has some stars. You should now have five stars. Oh, you can't see the pictures in the way. Wait a second. How can I bring this? Uh, my oh, the stars in the, the top way. corner. Yeah, you've got to come too high. Oh, wait a second. I can make this maybe smaller. Here we go. Look. I'll bring this down here. You'll get a bit of inception in the background. But uh, you should see that it's now it's five. So you've got five. Anyone else watching? Click that link and start the project. So now remove the inception, gone back. So first impressions. So you've got some tags in there, I think that's really good. Got a description, again, really good. You don't have a link to a demo site, but you might have something in the readme, as in maybe a link or some uh, animated GIFs or something, so we'll, uh, we'll get to that. And uh... yeah, there's a code of conduct. Um, so obviously, go straight in there with telling people what you're, uh, you're interested in, how they behave. However, when I open that, it's empty. Which one? <laughs> code of conduct. Code of conduct. So great that there's one there. There's no content to it though. There is actually a really, really good site, which is a code of contact generator, which is like a standard. It's called, oh, not covalence, it's another thing. Co, co something. Code, let me search for it. Code uh, of conduct. Um, oh, it's like a template. It's really good. Uh, I'll know it when I see it. And I just need to search for something more. Open source, it's open source code of conduct, and there is a, a name for it. I will find it now. Uh, ben, thanks for your message and link. I'll have a read in a couple of minutes. Yes, it's uh, the Covenant. So, Contributor uh, Covenant. And as a, as a, as a node, see, uh, like library for it, and you, you run the CLI, and um, it asks for your email address, and it puts it into the text, and it creates you a file. So that's really good. I'm gonna raise an issue for you with a link to that, uh, to say that it's empty. Let me, let me do that now. So if I um, go to Issues, and raise you an issue. Uh, contributors file is empty. Suggest using, I forgot what it's called already. But, uh, <laughs> the uh, contributor covenant. 
contributor covenant. Okay, I'll put a link in the uh, issue as well for you. I've got like three open source contributions this evening that's probably on the stream. This is brilliant. No, I'll have to do a few in a minute, I think. Thank you. Letting you take you more. Uh, so, yeah, README, um, just looking at that, that's probably the next thing I normally look towards is what's in the README. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the title is the name of the project. Do you need to have in that form? You could probably change the format, but not a big deal. Uh, using Yarn and NPM. Send, send, send the PR, change the format. Uh, depends. Some people like to just keep it that way. So I'm, it's a bit of a personal preference. Yeah, but you might one, close it, but you still get the you still get the contribution, right? True. Because true. you ra contribution is about raising an issue, raising a pull request. If it gets closed, it's fine. Yeah, raise it, raise it. So uh, before we do that, the uh, the demos we've got some screenshots there. So nice to see how it works. Is it all grayscale? I, I suppose say, I'd ask. It means it, for, it's quite grayscale. Oh, there's a color down. a bit lower down. Yeah. Um, but it's all coming from D3, right? So this is a this is just using D3 to introduce it. It's a good readme, actually. Got There's quite a lot of content in here, which is nice. I'm only introduction. halfway down already. Yeah, um, this is really good. So introduction, format your data into an array of objects. Good, yeah. This is really good. And you've got, you've got the code highlighting as well, which I think is great. That's part of Markdown built into yeah, but some GitHub. People don't. A lot of people forget to put the little thing yeah, in saying, this is, is uh, really JavaScript, etc. Nice. Oh, you got live code yeah. example. Well, let's click on that. Let's have a look. This is this is good. And Ben, I just saw your message. I, I did forget about your link in the GitHub comment. Uh, sorry, in the YouTube comment. I really apologise. We we'll look at your yep, repo next. Up next, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so that's all working. I mean, you can see the code up there. We can see the chart appearing on the side. You're still loading. Well, I'm. Um, what yours is loaded already? I clicked on it after you as well. I mean, that, that laptop. Computer. You need a new one. Need a new one. Is yours the the MacBook Pro fully is it fully loaded apart from the hard disk? Yeah, it's just the hard disk. I've got only one for the one terabyte because uh, yeah, the four terabyte that was just too much. Yeah, it's crazy. I might have to get one of those. Cool. I like, I like the demo. That's awesome. That's great. And uh, uh, this is really really good. Some experimental stuff. Okay. Doesn't say what's experimental about it. Uh, well, Nest cool uh, helper from cool helper from D three. So, I, I see there's supposed to be US as a capital US cars down the bottom there. Uh, Why are you reading that? This plot. Oh no, it shows us. Sorry, it shows us cars. That's been a long day. Needs a, needs a comma perhaps. <laughs> Somewhere I don't know. Um, um, yeah, so this plot shows us cars in main categories, displacement and displacement. Yeah. My only question is, okay. should stuff like state, like AES, uh, the quotes, should they be single or double? I know in Angular we use single. Maybe it's a React thing to use double? I don't know. Well, it's, to a degree, it's a personal preference thing, right? I mean, the main reason for using single in the past was because when you were writing a string of text, you often put double quotes in the text and, the, and it avoids that issue of having to escape the double quotes. A lot of the time now, obviously, if, you, if you're going to do things like that, you just use the backtick instead because um, assuming yeah. you're transpiling it all, then the backticks will do the job for you. So a bit of a personal preference. Yeah, we prefer single quotes. So on the imports as well, for example, they're all double quoted. Um, single quotes, I'd say, is nicer in JavaScript. But, so, uh, a couple of things I want to add. So, the README is really good. We, I mean, I'm really impressed with that. It's really nice. Uh, you've got a demos folder as well. We'll come to that in a minute. But uh, just a few suggestions that I noticed from uh, from the project page is well, you don't have a profile picture, so your your commit, your latest commit, uh, doesn't have. Um, don't know who you are. Don't know who you are. Even if you don't want it to be you. Um, you take a picture of like your back or your pet or something. There's something that just looks a bit more, re <coughs> excuse me, a bit more real rather than it's just the default placeholder. So I would definitely highly recommend doing that and look more credible. Yeah, let me have a drink before I die. I just saying that I've just looked to your profile page itself and had a quick look, and I can see obviously you'd, you've oh. been doing a lot of contributions since August-ish, the start of August last year. A bit quiet perhaps before that so you quite actually I looked at the previous year so there seems to be a common theme here that between sort of August and December you get lots of uh, commits going in three over oh, actually, 3, that's last year that's why yeah so, so yeah heavy committing since sort of August so You're which is, which me. is great so. I step up my game however they are all commits I mean great that you're doing lots of code but 
There are other things that I'm sure you could be doing, code reviews, oh, 100% raising commit. issues for things, pull requests. I mean, yeah. being 100% commit focused, whilst great to see lots of code going on, there's more to being it's a developer. Social, it's and, social and coding, else, right? So. And yes, as Andrew says, it's, it's more to being a developer. It's not just about head down and coding. So it's good to show those other, other skills as well. But it's great. I mean, the first thing we look at when we're hiring for people as well is looking at their GitHub projects and seeing what story that tells us about someone. Um, so when I was to look, if I was to look at this and go straight in here, I'd go, great, so 13 repositories, obviously I could have a bit more of a look at those. Um, good to see you've got a couple of links on the side. There's a, obviously a website here, I'm not going to click into it now. Um, plenty of commits going on. As I said, looks like mostly started from August this or last year, um, which is great. I mean, there's always a time to start. Are, are you a new developer? Have you recently got into coding? When, when did you start? Uh, I can see a few statistics trippings, graduate right? who loves programming. Yeah, okay, so you're a grad. Yeah, so that's great. So obviously you're, you're trying to build up that profile, uh, probably looking to get jobs and so forth but yeah i'd certainly say things like issues pull requests you can do that on your own project uh, raise an issue work on it raise a problem. even if it's just you that's doing it it helps show people that you understand that process flow um so the things like that that i'd certainly suggest looking into they're just little things they don't take much time to do but it just adds to that overall effect um uh, and again, if, yeah, if I go back to your project, obviously the only issue there is the one Eddie's just raised a moment ago. Yeah. There's no, no pull requests. Do you try and, uh, if you're still working on it, do try and raise milestones, like a sprint, and then raise issues, and then just when you create, when you do your work, just do, when you do the commit message, it put the issue number in it, and then close the issue. It just ties it all together. It looks more, more professional. The other thing I was going to say, you're following one person, and not it's me. It's not Eddie, yeah. It's not me. You've got to follow me. <laughs> Come on, I'll put up my numbers. So, uh, yes. Um, Obviously, follow me as well whilst you're at it. I mean, yes. We're, we're, about, we're both up on there. I've raised an issue. So, uh, Lorenzo can find knows you who easily, I am. Yeah. You need to raise an issue too. May raise an issue with one of your suggestions. I want to raise one for something else. Well, I could raise a really big issue. Don't raise big uh, An issue for me, anyway, is that there's no tests. Where, where are your tests? Yeah, I knew. For, for me, I, I, I tend to not use any library out there that has no evidence of quality to it. And at the moment, I can't see the quality side of what's here. There's evidently quite a bit of code going on. Uh, I'm not, I'm not got into all the different folders in the source folder, but there's obviously quite a bit going on in there because there's quite a few files in there. Um, what's backing it up to say that this is actually a quality solution and uh, is going to do the job? I know you're extending and using D3 behind the scenes, and D3 is a good library. It's got quite a lot of testing, quite heavy usage out there. Um, but with a project that's only got a few stars, no evidence of tests, I, I would be very wary using it myself. Uh, so I could raise a big issue on that and say, even if it's not very many tests, just start putting a few tests in there. Even if it's just one test for each activity that can go on, it might not test all the end edge cases. Uh, but for me, that would be the one. So I I'll put something in there just saying, uh, um, introduce a testing framework. Andrew's uh, just raising a, a, an issue on his yeah. computer right now. So I'm saying introduce a testing framework. Um, uh, for example, um, Jest is heavily used in uh, in the React world. Uh, my personal favorite would be something like Cucumber, though. I, I'm a big fan of Cucumber. Jest will work with Cucumber as well. Um, yeah, and just just cover the uh, the happy paths, um, even. A single test per component, or in this case, I suppose you could say per graph, uh, will do. Um, just something like that. That will help give confidence when you're coming along. Uh, so that, that's a big thing for me. Any any project should come with some tests. Awesome. So the next thing I was going to talk about was uh, we should soon go on to the next repo, and we've got a couple more questions as well. But I was going to say that if you have no releases. So if, if, if the moment your code is functional, you should then, I don't think I can do it for you. Yeah, so just looking at the package, Jason, doesn't look like I can see any automation for deploying it. Is it going up to NPM? How do people get, I mean, I saw on the install, right? There was an NPM, yeah, NPM install for React. So if I go and look this up on NPM, you might want to do the same. Um, oh, it must be, uh, what do you call it? Um, pushed up manually. It'd be really good if you can get CI to push that up for yeah, you. Yeah, so there is a release. And and, a release uh, well. In fact, there's been 32 releases looking on here. 32 versions have been released. So plenty of releases going on, which is great. It's all being pushed up to NPM. But only NPM knows um, about it. But yeah, no, no one else necessarily knows where to go find that on NPM. And again, you can see your collaborators, you've got this kind of, uh, kind of fixed image. 
sorry, default image. So yeah, I would say create some releases. That would be really good, really, really good. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I think you've done the hard work. It's just maybe some of the, the easier ones and the hard work. Yeah, the there's a few admin are. tasks going around the yeah. side. I mean, you could call test admin. I, I hate to say that, but that's it, part it, the code. a lot of people put it behind there. Behind the, the documentation as well. I mean, you've got obviously that nice readme that gives you a good really oversight good. of everything. Um, really but there's good. a lot more in your code just, just glancing there. There's a lot more. You've got obviously line graphs, point graphs, rectangles, x axis, y axis stuff. Um, does your readme fully reflect everything that's possible? Um, these things take time sometimes. I mean, I know earlier on when I was, I mean, I'm saying sort of graduates, I probably wasn't thinking documentation at yeah, all back true. in those days. But things have changed. I think back then it wasn't so the norm to have it, yeah. whereas now it's more the norm to, to have it. Yeah, so another folder in there. I, I know you've got, when I looked at demos, there are some demos, but they're all just PNG files. Um, so then they might be kind of, this is what you get at the end of it, but it doesn't tell you how did you generate that. So maybe if for each of those demos, just put a short, this is the code that ran that demo. Well, or you can have a folder for each one with a readme in each one. When you go into that folder, the readme appears under the, yep. the image and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, awesome, okay, I'm conscious of time. All these things help people use your project. Let's move on to the next one. So uh, Lorenzo, oh, yeah. I hope that helps. Uh, you've got five stars now and two new issues. So I look forward to reviewing that again in the future and seeing those improvements. So where are we going to next? So next we're gonna go, uh, let's go to Ben's, because he was next in the chat. Uh, I've been doing, I'm going to shout out yeah, to uh, you. Shout out. Uh, Exiton. Exiton, yeah. This is your old friend, Java. You used to be a Java dev for many years. Yeah, but we're going back a little while now. Well, you are old. I am old. So, so long as we're not using Spring, we might have a chance. Oh, Spring's awesome. Spring. <laughs> well, no, only because I haven't used Spring since like version 3, and it's oh, yeah. changed quite a lot. So this is another project. So, um, oh, Lorenzo, you're welcome. Thank you for sharing your project. Really appreciate it. So we, we've got to do the same again, right? We've got to do the stars. So yeah, yeah, we have to start the project. Let's start the project. So first couple stars. of stars, I, I think I got in there first. Oh, you did, it jumped up to two when I clicked it. So you got two more stars there. Um, ben, thanks for sharing. So again, first glances, you actually have got three releases. It just jumps out at me. So really having releases yeah. are good. So initial release, pre-release, alpha release, doesn't matter what you call them, loving that. That's, um, that's really, really good. Straight away, that looks, I don't know, looks quite professional. Uh, profile picture, again, it's not you, but you have something, so that's not the default, so that's um, really good. The other thing that jumps out at me that is not such a good thing is the .idea folder that shows a bit yeah. of carelessness because that shouldn't be committed. And so an npm ignore is probably missing from that. Well, I can see there's no npm ignore NPM, file. NPM, git. Oh, git ignore, God. Long day. <laughs> Yeah, it's half eight, right? Yeah, well, we should finish at half eight. So we've got 15 minutes, we're finishing at yeah. half eight. Yeah, it has been a long day. Um, but yeah, the dot .idea folder, I mean, that's that's yeah. a private folder. Obviously, you often have some config in this. There may be one or two files you do want to keep there, just in case someone else is working on your project in idea. Really? No. Uh, but only because things like style guides and right, the, the idea you put your some of your styling, like if I want to set spaces and stuff. That's done in editor config there, right? Editor config will take care of quite a large chunk of it, but not everything. So sometimes I might argue that there's one or two files that I would say, okay, fair enough, but you have put the entire lot in there. Um, I would say ignore it completely. I ignore the idea folder, the webstorm yeah, folder, I do, I do the, as well. all the other VS code, like v yeah. S, yeah, dot VS code folders. Ignore all of them. Um, I think that's fine. I think that's an issue. So we've got a readme, which is good. We've got an intro, how it works. The image does look a bit squished, maybe. Or maybe it's just my eyes, because it's been a long day. I was coding at 4 o'clock this morning. Not open source for a client. Then did an open source for an hour. It looks like that I'm might just be the way the image is. The way the image is, okay. Yeah. So, uh, the, the developer, I can talk, developer information <laughs> uh, and commands. So the commands, I think you could put in like code quotes, if that's the command. Let me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you a PR right now. Let's just jump in and do it. Uh, read me. What do you think about the pictures folder and the capital P and stuff? What are your thoughts on that? Again, I, I prefer lowercase for folder names. Um, 
not generally a reason to have uppercase names for files. Likewise, when I go into there, there's a how it works PNG. Again, I tend to lowercase and hyphenate between things when it comes to file names. I could argue it's a personal preference. A lot of people do it that way though. So I'd say you could almost argue there's a bit of a standard that's come when it comes to file names. Um, as long yeah. as you're consistent though, I right? I think if you're because consistent, I mean, the next one's lowercase lower case case and underscores, underscore. So. so just be consistent, definitely. Yeah. I'm about to propose this file change to you. Um, and uh, so I'm going to raise a PR. And there are a couple more markdown files in here with a bit more documentation in, obviously. So nice big block there. Again, got the code highlighting going on on that. So it makes nice. it easier to read. That's another contribution for me today. Yes, it was simple, but it's making an improvement. I do suggest that everybody contributes to other people's projects. Go back to the code now. I've got one it's fork as well now. Yeah. I just forked it. Okay. Where are we looking at? So I, I, uh, I'm I was just know? looking at the other markdown files because right, okay. there's two more markdown files in there with a bit more. Uh, oh, nice. A bit more text in, a bit more content. Color coded, yeah, like you mentioned, really I mean, good. I, I have played, I think this was a Minecraft plugin from what I saw. I played yes. Minecraft a number of years ago now. I, um, I guess one of the things I noticed though in the markdown file is in this code is indented where the other code is not. Yes, yeah, there is some alignment there. Uh, let me, just, let me just send you another PR. Let's just do it. Let's, 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 let's not You're just around. getting all of these in, aren't you? Like right. Diving on them all. You're welcome to do them if you want. That's right. You snooze, you lose. Again, it's just being consistent. So, um, Again, when I look at the issues, no, no particular issues. Pull request from Eddie. Another one coming up now. I assume the labels that are being used are all the default labels, because, yeah, there's no issues in this. That's what the default labels on uh, the GitHub gives you. Ben, don't worry. It's, when it's your own project, if you looked at my project, and I recommend you oh, all yeah. do, um, I, that's what hub. I've got quite a few projects. I'll bring it up on the screen now. Um, the main two are Tribe Dashboard and Pipeline Dashboard. I'm sure you are all notice many things about my projects. This is not about oh, us yeah. trying to... We say, critique hey, our own projects all the time as well. There's, there's always improvements. There's no reason not to. It's just sometimes it's nice to get an outsider saying... That's why open this source is, what, is amazing. This is what I think. These are some suggestions I would make. You can reject them. Everyone has personal preferences. Yeah. So take it all with a pinch of salt, I would say. Um, but Absolutely. yeah, there, there are certainly things that I would say are some emerging standards or ways that a lot of the community might do things, but not everyone would do so. It's, like, it's like, almost like the 80-20 rule, right? Probably 80% of do, doing it mostly because other people are doing it, and 20% are perhaps just trying different things out, or they've just yeah. had a slightly different approach when they were learning this stuff. So don't um, feel you have to accept my PRs. I've I have noticed one of the stuff. things in that pictures folder very quickly, as I was looking at some of the other yeah. markdowns, there's an A dot markdown in the pictures folder. A. Yeah, it's empty. Let's delete it. So. You gonna do it, shall I? You do it. You do it. Yeah, then, you get, then you get a second fork as well. So I delete say, it. Um, an empty file is not needed. This is just an empty file. Should not be required. Could be, you do, we could be doing these in changelog format as well, you know. But there's no That's issue true. to go with it, so I haven't got an issue to reference. I will propose that as just a remove that file. It doesn't look like it's got any value it's adding. Yeah, do it. So again, delete. on my screen, it's crazy day. Uh, a fork and I'm raising a pull request against my fork back into your project which you will then be able to accept if you're happy to remove the file uh, if you have a reason why it's there obviously drop a reason just say actually this is needed for whatever reason and close the pull request uh, but I couldn't see anything that would suggest it is required if you're watching as well don't forget to give us a thumbs up on the video really appreciate it or a thumbs down I did have like 10 people watching and up to six I must have said something bad <laughs> well, I was mumbling before. Maybe it's just getting to that like time of day now because people over in America, they're probably working now. People on the other side of the world are probably sleeping. People in the UK are eating. eating. Yeah, it's it's kind of that time of day now where, yeah. Awesome. Okay. But it has been increasing. You know, chat has been increasing. People watching has been increasing. So uh has been good. Yeah, I'm just taking a little bit of a look at some of the source code, some of the Java code very quickly to see if there's anything there. I mean, I can see there's documentation in line going on great like with the, yeah what they call doc blocks yeah the doc blocks are all yeah. in there um i'm not going to sort of do a review of what the code is doing it would take too long but just at a glance looks like the sort of the naming of things are, are good um there's quite a bit of pascal case going on for some of the uh 
Oh no, they're, okay, okay, they're the class name. Sorry, I'm getting that time of day. Yeah, and then yeah, camel yeah. case on the uh, the variable name. So that's great. So the class names are all Pascal K. So capitalized on the first character, capitalized for any other word that's joined up. Yeah, it's Pascal case, and then camel case, where it's lowercase for the first character and uppercase for any further words. So you've got got that going on. Uh, I can spot a small formatting issue when I'm so I'm looking at this armor equip event file. Sorry, I haven't got up on the screen. And he's not sharing that everyone can see what yeah, I'm looking what, at what here. File you in? Let me uh, so I'm in the. If you go to the Java, yes, yeah, so go into the, uh, that's the one. Okay. Go into source. Uh, open up. I think it was in main. Java. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Let me share my screen. Um, um, yeah, I think it was the top one. Yeah, I think I mostly just click top, top, top. And then top yeah. again. Um, so very small formatting thing here. If you look on line 16. 16? Um, right the top. Oh, yeah, I see missing a missing Yeah, space a little there. bit of a space would be nice just to, yeah. before that opening bracket. Another pull request? Tiny, tiny thing. Yeah. If you like, I mean, yeah, this I file know. was written in 2015. I mean, it's great to have these dot blocks. I do like the dot blocks, you see. I mean, this is it's been there for a few years as such. Um, Oh, interesting no, about Bob, Bob Lee, is that is that yourself? I mean, that's a, that's a reference to a different GitHub project here. Could be that this has been bought across from somewhere else, because uh, it does look like uh, a different GitHub account is being referenced on there. Uh, so maybe the, this is a problem that's coming from another project that's been, uh, I'll say, copy and pasted. Uh, which is a library that you're using? Ben's just written, it's actually a library I'm using what the file that I'm changing, maybe I won't submit a pull request to you then. So it does say libs actually, to be fair, you're right. There is a libs there. Oh, you yeah. commit the libs, right. Okay, I'm used to, okay, let me get canceled. Yeah, a lot yeah, of there. normally dependencies are managed through. So for example, in Java, but, something like Maven might but be they getting have got, used. There is, um, uh, Ben has got a pom file, which is managed oh, yeah. dependencies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you've got yeah. it. So, so you've put committed it. So, that, it. so that's the thing you see, someone like me coming along where I wasn't necessarily thinking too much about what you're doing with dependency management and so forth. I've just gone straight into, let's have a look at some of the code. I, I just didn't it's even think about the fast start you're seeing in Lebs. Uh, yeah, it's under so source, that's why. Don't commit your libraries. At the end yeah. of the day, if people are using a the project, they should be able to just install the dependencies, uh, maybe even install or whichever dependency manager you're using. Uh, and then obviously they can then get those pulled down without having to ha use the version you've got because you might be well whilst you be, should be fixing your version numbers anyway yeah. you might have a different version that you've pushed in as compared to the uh, the version that would come down if they were to install it locally so yeah slight distraction there but let's perhaps look um, and let me share Andrew's there's a test um, folder in here they've got, got some tests oh okay nice um, let's yeah. share Andrew's um, YouTube channel he says Angular uh, best practices with Git and the whole workflow from beginning to end. So I want to share his channel. So if you want to subscribe to him, then uh, you can uh, watch some of those videos and encourage him to do more videos and do more open source because he has loads of time. He's got four little helpers at home and they take care of everything, so he can just spend lots of time doing videos and coding. Okay, I'm just going to bring it up now. Um, Andrew, 23 subscribers. It's growing. It's growing. It's good. 24. Everyone counts. Nice. He needs to get to 1,000, so everyone subscribe. Let, yeah. me, let me share this now. Andrew's channel. Well, 24 in a couple of weeks. I'll, I'll take that. And party. <laughs> Boom. -boom. Clank. Yeah, um, we'll get some more videos uh, up at the weekend. So that's That'll Andrew's help. channel. And then we had a question from Circle Pixel. Circle Pixel, are you still around? Or are you going to ask the question like, uh, not that long ago? Oh. It was actually quite longer, almost like 20 minutes ago. So uh, hopefully you're still around and we can try and answer. Yeah, the question is, um, what would you, uh, or is it, is it lost now? What would you say is the best way to making website responsive? Like would relative units do the job or CSS grid or something like bootstrap? Or would you say a combination oh, of multiple methods? So this is it. We're gonna disagree. Come on, punch up, let's do it. Okay, so bootstrap as far as libraries, I, I loved bootstrap for, Oh gosh, probably about four years. I use it on loads of projects, but everywhere I was going, I was just seeing Bootstrap here, Bootstrap there, and it became really obvious this is a Bootstrap using project. I then, I suppose, used Material in a similar fashion for probably a couple of years before I started seeing Material websites everywhere. So for me, I don't tend to use a lot of libraries now. I try to build all my CSS from scratch. When it comes to um, REM versus EM versus PX and so forth, I would say 
you end up with a bit of a mix. I, I tend to use a mix of REM and EM. So obviously you set your top level font. So I normally would set a top level font size of say 20 pixels, because it's nice and easy to divide in my brain when I'm saying I want this at 0.8 REM or 0.8 EM. But it will all depend. So for things like um, a font size, I probably would use an REM for most of those when it comes to borders. Um, and so far, I might do that slightly differently. Um, I'm getting that right on time. It's getting late in the day. So font size, no, font size probably uses an EM. Um, but yeah, look at, uh, depends on how you want it to go. But yeah, responsive wise, uh, grid um, for your looking sort of outwards, so the, the whole layout, uh, and flex for kind of organizing some of the kind of stuff inside of the grid. Uh, so yeah, I'd use a mix of grid and flex to get things responsive. I just bridged out for my on material design, keep it really simple. I want to focus on functionality. Andrew loves to perfect things, and that's really good because he's really fast at those sorts of things. But, but I also like so to build my own component library. So one of the things that I'm doing with Vendra is I'm pulling out all of the components I've written in Angular as its own project so people can see how I actually do that stuff. True. Um, so that's going to be the first project that should be coming up. I'm still working through the commits. I'm just pulling everything across. I just want to get all of it in one place, put it all up there, and then let people critique when it's all there. Um, yeah, give me another two weeks probably to get that out. But yeah, hopefully that answers that sort of question. I mean, I think for simplicity, just do just do Bootstrap uh, or, or, or if you're getting or started and you're just experimenting. Don't get me wrong. If it's a trial thing and I'm just saying, as a prototype, I just want to get something done quick. Then building all your CSS up, creating your own components, it does take time so i would agree if you want to just get a prototype up and running go bootstrap go material use something that's already out there if you're looking to say right i'm taking this to the level up, i want to become a bit more unique and from that point of view then starting to build your own um components probably makes a lot of sense as well so yeah hopefully that answers a lot of your questions and hopefully that was quite engaging don't forget to give us a thumbs up subscribe if you're not subscribed and let us know what you thought put comments after the video is finished put comments let us know what you thought worked well. Starting late probably wasn't very good. Let us also know um, what you would like to talk about in the future. Because we're still kind of experimenting uh, is in terms of technology that we're using, the cameras. And we're also keen to get feedback from people, good or bad, to see you know when to do it, what time to do it, um, what kits we're using, what worked better. I had the 360 camera on last time, but it only lasts like 45 minutes. So that's not so good. And I can't share yeah. my screen. We're thinking about getting people on board. Um, and joining us, like we had Anton earlier this week with us. Uh, we also we thought of some hacking project. We thought we could hack together. If yeah, that's good, we're thinking of doing like some funny little bots and stuff. Yeah. What a crazy idea! Maybe we should build something that follows people on places like Twitter and then and gets our uh, our follow numbers up as people might follow you back. And then you unsubscribe like a week later automatically. The bot would take care of it. So that was a bit cheeky. We also thought of putting up loads of cameras around the room and um, writing an Angular and Firebase yeah. project. Let you control which camera is being used. You can all vote. Every minute, maybe the camera will change and everyone votes on the camera they want and then it'll switch to that camera and then reset the yeah. votes or something. Like for example, as we've been doing these streams, there's probably, what, four or five different scenes in our project. If there's a particular scene that people say, actually, because you guys are talking, you've forgotten to change scene, you could have something that could change the scenes as well and things like that. Yeah, so we've got some uh, we've got some ideas of some little hack projects. We've got our main open source projects that we can contribute to and share. We thought it might that might be a bit slow going, so it might be fun just to uh, build some some fun projects. So uh, yeah, we've got some questions. Uh, Moon steroid, just saw your stream, but I can't stay. Looking forward for streams like this in the future. Moon steroid, thanks for your support. Really appreciate it. Thanks for dropping by. Um, it, it means a lot, and like I said, that gives us kind of the energy and enthusiasm to do more streams. Just let us know what sort of streams you would like. Um, and uh, we can try and include that if you want to speak to certain people. Next week we are going to have uh, recruiters. We're doing some in. recruiters in, yeah. So, we've got, I think, two recruiters who have said yes. Versus two devs, so it's going to be... Have, we may end up with a third recruiter, or maybe yeah. even a third dev, so... Yeah. Yes. We're not going to be smashing heads together We're not too much. We'll we say. might get our asses whooped. So. Uh, oh yeah, we've got to be careful how much we, uh, we say here, because yeah, we don't want to give too many of our plans away, just in case they're watching. Of course, yes, it's true. We need to make sure we've got the element of surprise. <laughs> so, uh, yes, and uh, Circle Pixel says, great, thanks for the reply. No problem. Thank you very much for the question. Really appreciate it. That's good. So, if there's no more questions, I think it's time to call it a day. Do also follow us on Instagram. We have started we've doing We're on Instagram, scenes. we're on Twitter, we're on YouTube but, now. But there is a difference, um, right? But, um, yeah, the Instagram is, yeah. 
a bit more of a snippets during the day, okay? Yeah, we'll do one now and walk into the train station maybe as I'm breaking my back of my on my camera. As we're half asleep, use. as we're trying to as a trip over stumble. and fall. Um, so let me just share that Instagram as well. So my Instagram is this, and I will get Andrews. So subscribe, and you can watch behind the scenes on Instagram. We're doing like short videos on there. Let me get Andrews if my computer just doesn't die. Andrew, is it underscore Andrew Cunliffe? Yeah. Let's have a look. Oh, I just got a follow. Thank you very much. That didn't work. I just died. That's not really good. It comes in, maybe. Yeah. I'm just going to search for it. Fair I enough. think my computer is dying. Uh, it's probably easier for you to join the stream <laughs> and paste it in yourself. Probably could, yeah. Uh, yeah. I will search for you now. Uh, Andrew Cunliffe. There we go. Don't crash. Okay, so I want to share that now. So this is uh, Andrew Instagram. I'm just going to paste into the chat. Do follow him as well. We'll do it behind the scenes, like I said. You can still ask us questions, and we're going to do it behind the scenes uh, of us setting up, us at lunchtime, like a stand up. Day. We'll yeah. do one tomorrow, like a lunch lunchtime stand up, what we've been working yeah. on. Yeah. So you can see what it's like as dev life in London, UK. To show us We can show where, you, where we're at right now, yeah? I mean, we're sat at the moment. In our office, I'm going to grab my phone off here. If I've changed well, the camera, my, my phone's really far away. I can't, I can't grab it. Yeah, there we go. So, for anyone that is on my channel, we are currently sat in the WeWork offices. You can see just outside, uh, yeah, just outside, you should be able to see there's a pool table, there's a oh, table tennis fair. table. Over there, we've got a foosball table. Well, that's and, and, and in the foreground, you can see Eddie's camera sat up on there. And you can also see a tripod just behind the camera. <laughs> But uh, that was going to be the main camera for the evening, but there was a slight technical issue again, which is why we started the stream late. Um, Let's spin this round. But yeah, you can see we are sat down here. And you can see Andrew as well. And over on the screen, we have a TV next to us. We're in the WeWork offices uh, over in London. Bit of fun. So uh, yes, we will... Um, do some behind the scenes, let us know what behind the scenes you'd like to see and we will um, try and do it. So we will try and share more, to be, have more transparency on what's going on in, um, in dev life. Startup life, entrepreneur life. Well, I think that's time to call it a day. Thank you everyone and uh, we will see you soon. Let us know what you think and let us know what you'd like to see. Thanks. Have a good evening everyone or a good day. Bye. Have right, end the stream. Cool. All right. See everyone. Mute, stop stream. Just have a holding page up.